say a word about the genesis of the Beecham Childress book, Principles of Biomedical Ethics. Uh, we started in 1975 to have a short course for professionals on biomedical ethics. Uh, we initially called it the Total Immersion Course in Bioethics. Um, that sounded a little bit like the Baptist religious tradition, so we eventually changed the name to uh, Intensive Bioethics Course. Uh, the 40th uh, course will be held in 2014. Um, in the earliest um, incarnation of that course, Arthur Dyke, a theologian at Harvard Divinity School, and two of his graduate students came down from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Arthur gave the ethical theory lectures in the total immersion course in bioethics. Gradually, we decided maybe we can do that with our own faculty members, the theory part of the course. And so we invited Tom Beecham and Jim Childress to develop lectures on ethical theory. And those lectures gradually grew into the book, Principles of Biomedical Ethics. So first it was the spoken word, and then it became the written word. Uh, what Tom and Jim did was take the three principles from the Belmont report and increase them to four. In so doing, they changed respect for persons to respect for the autonomy of persons. Um, I think that that probably was a, a helpful move. It connects respect with Immanuel Kant and his moral philosophy. Um, it also made very clear that when we're dealing with research involving children, we're not dealing with autonomy in the full sense. The National Commission had divided respect for persons into two parts, respect for the autonomy of adult persons and protection of children. I think protection of children falls more into the area of risks and benefits and therefore beneficence. Um, Tom and Jim think that there's a stronger moral obligation not to do harm than there is an obligation to do positive good for others. And I understand that, but I think in some ways it's simpler just to talk about three principles. Beneficence having to do with benefits and harms. Justice dealing with the allocation of benefits and harms, and respect for autonomy dealing primarily with the understanding and consent of the individuals taking part in the research. I think this is a useful framework. Uh, it's been discussed internationally. There's a, an almost 1,000-page book about the principles of biomedical ethics. If I had to suggest a, a fourth principle, I think it would be something like solidarity. And that would be an attempt to say that the context for all that we do in ethics is that we're all in this together as a human community. And so we're not isolated individuals making autonomous decisions. Uh, we come out of communities. Uh, we're responsible to communities. And what we do has an effect on uh, our fellow human beings. <laughs>